In today's video, we're going to introduce you to Temesura, Romania. It's actually the third largest city in Romania. Yes, it's where we got our adventure started and where you should too. So stay tuned. We're John and Bev, and we are the Retirement Travelers. So Temesur is not as well known as Bucharest, and there's no Dracula's castle here, but that is not a reason not to visit this place. It, it is a charming city, and we are so thankful that that's where we started our journey. Yes, it's not too big and it's not too small. It was just right for us. It has the most beautiful architecture. It's actually called the Little Vienna mm. because of the beautiful architecture that reminds people of Vienna, but it is also called the City of Flowers and it has many, many flower beds throughout the city and mm -hmm. actually a park called Roses Park. Yes, a lot, a lot of great parks. Now, one of the reasons why people don't visit this first, it's kind of tucked away in the far western part of Romania. Now, we were in uh, Belgrade, Serbia, so it was pretty accessible for us. It's also, there's a lot of cheap flights from all over Europe so we think that this is a great starting point for your visit to Romania. The city is a very walkable city. And while we were there, we walked everywhere we went. We, did. Um, we took advantage of the Bega River Trail. It went through a park. There are actually 36 different parks in the city. So they very much use their outdoor space. Uh, we saw all kinds of people that were enjoying it. We actually saw a spin class. We saw people <laughs> fishing in the river. It was lots of fun. Yes, they really they take their green spaces very seriously. They also take their squares very seriously. There's three <laughs> Three big squares in town, Union Square, Liberty Square, and Victory Square. And every one of them is surrounded with lots of little cafes and some really cool architecture. Yeah, we saw lots of tourists, but the funny thing is, is that we did not see many Americans. No, I, I mean, mean, I don't think we saw any we, Americans. We may have been the only ones. And that's really a shame because it is yeah. a great town to visit. Yeah, we didn't feel like we were out of place. They were very welcoming and yeah. friendly and happy people when we sat at cafes and had dinner or mm -hmm. we stopped for coffee or a drink. It was just really nice to sit and not feel like we were overwhelmed with tourists. That's right. And, and it has a cool vibe in the town. It's a lot of young people there. It's, it's actually a university town. There's a number of universities and I believe somewhere like 30 or 40,000 students in town. So it's kind of got a, a, a kind of a hip culture about it. It's, it's pretty, it's a pretty, it's a neat town. Speaking of students, they played a very big role in the 1989 revolution that occurred when the country turned from communism. Yeah, the, the events that took place in Timisoara in 1989 changed the direction of an entire country. But it happened in 1989 when a group of congregants were trying to prevent their pastor from being deported. It's a kind of a long story, but it occurred where the people came out into the streets, especially the students, and they started protesting the, the country and the leadership. And the army was ordered to fire upon the citizens. And the officer said, we're not going to do it. And they laid down their arms. And within six days, the entire country was free of communism. I can't imagine what it was like in 1889 here. No. We're in a room where there are pictures that children drew after the revolution. And it's, they saw a lot of bad things. They saw a lot of bad things. They lived through a lot of bad things too. You can almost see that these pictures show, a lot of them show people dying, but it shows people rising up. It shows flags, it shows, you know, Good too. Yes, it was definitely for the better. Very much. To learn more about those events, we went to the 1989 Museum of the Revolution and there was a lot of information uh, about how it happened and, and all the events that occurred. The people especially are yeah, very, we, very proud of that. We, we actually met a woman at the museum who was living in Temesur as a child, uh, moved to the United States and brought her children back just for the first time, just to get to experience and see some of the sites uh, from back in the 1980s. Another quirky little thing we were told to do <laughs> was to visit the Communist Consumer Era Museum, and it was very quirky. <laughs> it was. It was a museum full of stuff that was just, you know, representative of that time and what homes were like, kitchen appliances and yes. entertainment and toys. And Lo lots of stuff from the 50s, 60s, and 70s for sure. Lots of stuff. 
This doesn't fit our minimalist mindset, does it? No, it doesn't. Somebody has just kept too much stuff. And they've made it into a museum. It's like a communist flea market. It's a communist flea market. <laughs> okay, let me get the metronome going. Uh -oh. I'm pretty good. That's annoying. Let me stop that. Yeah. Not exactly what we were expecting. After our visit to the Consumer Museum, we headed to the square where we saw this charming man playing music. That was cute. It is very cute. <laughs> it just puts a smile on your face, it does. doesn't it? And then we continued through town to Liberty Square and you go through the Umbrella Street and you come out into Victory Square. And at the end of Victory Square is an amazing church, the Orthodox Metropolitan Cathedral, one of the prettiest we've seen. We went inside and we really loved this church. It was just beautiful. After the church, we headed home and we just happened to hear some music playing down one of the streets That's and we right. said, let's go check it out. <laughs> We got lucky again. We stumbled across an international folk festival that happens uh, every early every July, three days long, and we went to check it out. And what we found was amazing. It was uh, folk dancing and music from uh, ethnic groups all over Romania, including into Bulgaria and Serbia. It was very, very interesting. And we went every night. And, and the thing that struck me about it is that people came to see the show. Mm -hmm. I think in the United States, when we go to a street fair or a festival, everybody hangs out at the food. Yeah, but well, here they were. Yes, it was a packed house every single night watching the shows and, and large groups of performers and traditional outfits. Uh, it was really they cool. They were beautiful. Yeah, it was great. It was very interesting. And of course, there was great food. Lots of food. Lots of food. They had these huge paella pans full mm. of traditional food, I guess. Oh, there was polenta and meats and vegetables and just really all different kinds of foods. We tried to eat our way through all of them. <laughs> we did. We went there every night and had dinner. We did. Because it was just the best thing and, and it was so much fun. Yes, and guilty. Guilty. <laughs> As we mentioned earlier, Temeshore is a great front door to visit Romania. We had a great time in our week here, and our time here in Romania is just getting started. Yes, we're actually spending a whole month in Romania, but we're heading to Coluj next week, and we're taking a train, so be sure you come along with us and see where we're headed, and, and uh, maybe you'll get some ideas of your own for a journey through Romania. See you next week. Be sure to hit subscribe and follow along on our retirement journey around the world.